Hello, and welcome to The Reading Room, the podcast brought to you by your Rowan County Public Library. I'm Morgan. And I'm Emery. And it's that time again. It's halfway through February. Well, I guess it's two-thirds of the way through February. It's some weeks through February, and so that means it's time to talk about March. February's over. Stop Mm. living in the past. Don't do this. (laughs) I'm already having an existential crisis about the fact that February is actually almost over. Yeah, honestly, I can't believe that we're this far into 2022, almost two months. Which, speaking of which, actually, uh, that's our next big thing that is coming up is, of course, we're going to be closed on Monday, the 21st, for President's Day. So just keep that in mind. But then on Tuesday, we've got a big event that we hope that you will participate in. And that is Tuesday. With Did a capital, you see that? With a capital two. Are you picturing it in your brain? Can you see me? Imagine the number two, Tuesday. Two, but capitalized. Yeah. Large. It's, it's going to be two twenty two twenty two. Every time I look at that number, my brain goes... Tuesday. <laughs> it's time to do 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 That's all. I I have spent so long staring at the number two for the past few weeks uh, that it's like semantic satiation is setting in, where you hear a word so many times it loses meaning. Yep. Like if you just you just look at the word bowl, just say bowl over and over. <laughs> bowl. Bowl. What is that? Bowl. And like okay, but. Has only the number two lost meaning for you? Or like also, wow, um, I was going to say also two as in also, and that makes no sense, but it is what I mean. Um, yeah, like, like, T- <laughs> like T-W-O, T-O, T-O-O, like all twos. Gone. Gone. Out the window. They're gone. They're just, it's, it's like bowl. It just doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, <laughs> but it should mean something to you because what we are doing for Tuesday is this is kind of a once in a lifetime date that you get to celebrate right this is not going to happen again for a long time uh like three three thirty three is a ways away (laughs) it'll be a minute before we get to that it'll be a minute so that being the case uh you know we we want to do something even though it might seem a little silly we want to do something to make it special so all day long on tuesday Kids can come in and go to the children's area, and we're going to have a numeral two that you get to decorate with all kinds of decorations. We're going to have glitter, we're going to have glue, we're going to have googly eyes and feathers and all kinds of little bits and bobs for kids to decorate. Everyone 5 to 12. And also we're going to have some buttons for you to take home that's going to be cute. And if you are 13 and over, we have a different kind of art for you. It's all about art because your art is, wait for it, too good not to share. Morgan, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would like to apologize formally on behalf of the library I as a whole. I apologize for nothing. Uh, <laughs> that is... Oh, I know. you. That's why I have to apologize for all of us, because you are our branding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, mm. oh, when you say it like that. Can we just put you back in that sweet little IT slot where no one has to hear this? (laughs) Oh, you'll hear it. (laughs) You'll hear it. It just might not make it onto Facebook, but you'll hear it. So, yes. No, your your art, though. We want it. So we're going to give you an art kit with two miniature canvases, some paint, brushes, all that stuff. And you take those. You paint both of them with whatever you want any kind of art that inspires you, and keep one of them, and then put your information on the back of the second one, name, phone number, how to reach you, whatever, and bring it back to us, and we're going to have a community art show. Now, you have until March the 8th to actually return these, so you're going to start picking up on February the 22nd, but you don't have to rush and hurry to paint it like right here in the drive through or in the atrium and get it back to us by the end of business that day. Don't worry about it. That'd be kind of fun though, wouldn't it? Like um, what yeah, if like we did, paint? yeah, a speed painting program where like you have, I don't know, an hour for like a, like a full sized canvas. Now that, that's a program. Slap idea. whatever you want on it. Somebody's going to win. I, I like that. Actually, that sounds more like a December program though. It's like 22 is almost over. 2022 is almost over. Hurry. Look forward to that in approximately nine months. Yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm making a note. I'm going to remember you said that. So, yes, you've got until March the 8th to paint your canvases, return one of them to us, and we'll put it in an art show and there will be a prize. 
So you've got nothing to lose and everything to win. So come by and be sure to pick up a kit starting on Tuesday. And that same day at 4 p.m., 4 to 6, uh, we're going to have another instance of On Board. So if you are into tabletop gaming, if you're into board games, dice games, card games, come by at 4 p.m. that evening and play some board games. I will be there. We will have some snacks and drinks and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to be playing Boss Monster. That is our featured game. Morgan, what is Boss Monster? Uh, it's really cool, actually. It is a tabletop card game. Uh, sort of a, not quite a deck building game. It goes a little too fast for that. It's uh, But a hand building game where the idea is it's inspired by retro video games. Oh. Where uh, you are a boss monster at the end of a dungeon and you use cards to build your dungeon to try and stop heroes from getting to you. And every time that you stop a hero, you get points based on how strong they were. And the first person to a certain number of points wins. But wait, that's not all because <laughs> you can sabotage your opponent's dungeons by doing things like just directly dealing damage. Or you can help enemy heroes by sabotaging traps so that they don't go off in another player's dungeon and the hero gets through that room without taking damage, things like that. So there is some some strategy. Uh, it, it does get a little complex as you get into it. There's more you can do. But it's a very shallow learning curve, very easy to pick up, and a pretty quick game, too. It's for, uh, like, four to five players, um, three to five players. And it's, it's better on the upper end of that. Two people can play, but it's better with three or four people. So I'll look forward to seeing there and playing with you. And the day after that, at 4.30, we're going to have Writer's Workshop, where Megan has chosen a new theme for this month. It's going to be narrative nonfiction, which I'm excited about. I think it's interesting that we inadvertently talked about nonfiction so much in our last mm -hmm. episode. So so maybe if you listened to that and you've been maybe deep diving a little more into the nonfiction side of your reading habits, if that's something that you weren't quite as well acquainted with before, like maybe the rest of us weren't, you should... Come by and try your hand at writing it. Absolutely. Because narrative nonfiction is a lot of fun. I actually took a, weirdly, I took a class on this. A lot of people automatically think of nonfiction, as we discussed in our last episode, as just facts that are written down. Just dry, boring history or like, you know, a biography that's told in a very matter-of-fact fashion. And that doesn't always have to be the case. A lot of things that we don't immediately consider are nonfiction, such as cookbooks or uh, an engineering manual, books about how to fix a car, how to build a model. If you check out a book from here that is all about how to play a certain video game, like a guide to Minecraft or a book full of ideas that you can build with Lego sets, those are all nonfiction. So nonfiction doesn't have to be dry and boring. Even history doesn't have to be dry and boring. We talked about food history in the last episode, which I find fascinating. So this is also nonfiction when it is written from a narrative point of view, when someone is narrating it as though telling a story. And there are people like Wendell Berry who are famous for this, uh, like pe famous people I have known. If you've never read that book, it's a great book. Wendell Berry's a great guy. And he is from here in Kentucky. From He's fairly local. So check out his books. And it is him narrating and telling it as though it's a story, because it is. It's, it's things that happened to him, but they weren't boring. They happened to him, and he had fun when they were happening. Uh, the Cave Run Storytelling Festival. Oh, I miss that. Oh, I... I miss um, that. That's narrative nonfiction. I don't know that technically I should be making this as, like, an official announcement, so everybody keep it down. Mm -hmm. But we do have word from the Cave Run Storytelling Committee that this year we are looking at bringing it back. Oh, good. Oh so my gosh. if you want a firsthand account of the absolute most entertaining form of narrative nonfiction, hit up the Cave Run Storytelling Festival last weekend of September every year that it happens, which for the last few years it hasn't, but fingers crossed so hard that this year it's finally going to be coming back. Yes, because I fell in love with the Storytelling Festival um, back in 2019. 
Was that your first time? That was the first time I had ever been. Morgan. I didn't. I actually, I didn't even know about it. I didn't know it existed. I'd never heard of it. Somehow it just completely passed me by. I, I don't know how I missed it. 2019 was the year I found out about wow. it. And the first year I went. And then the pandemic happened. I was a baby my first few. Like I was so young that I actually don't remember it. Um, Wild. It was, I guess this, technically this should be like the 24th year, but it'll be the 22nd or mm -hmm. something. Um, It'll be the 24th year, but the 22nd festival because right. they skipped 2020 and right. 2021. I th if I remember the numbers correctly, and I'm probably wrong, um, but I, yeah, literally was an infant. Um, I have been every single year since it started. Man. And um, it's a good tradition. Let me tell you. You yeah, need to I mean, jump on that bandwagon. I, I had a lot of fun. I cannot recommend it enough. It was great. And it did feel like a festival. There was big tents. Uh, multiple acts, so to speak, you know, people coming and telling stories different ways. And then, of course, you know, there were vendors with all kinds of snack foods. You got to get that festival food. You got to get the festival food. Shaved it's, ice, funnel cakes, deep fried Oreos. Oh, it's the um, mm. what are they? The spiral spuds are really what do it for me. It's like, oh, yes. When they they like spiral the potato spiral and then deep potato. fry it. Yes. yes. Uh, Decadence. 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 Because I, I try my best to stay away from that kind of food except at a festival because I know when I go to a festival, you have to. It's mandatory. There's literally no choice. It's Otherwise, like, why yeah. are you there? Yeah, why are you there? Because first of all, you got to enjoy yourself. But also, it's almost like a traditional sort of cover charge. Like, if you go to a festival, like the Apple Festival in Johnson County, the Tobacco Festival in Elliott County, the Sargon Festival in Morgan County, if you go and you don't partake, like, why? Why, why did you come? You're not getting the full experience. Exactly. So you have to have funnel cake. You have to have a tiger's ear or a bear claw. You know, you, you've got to get the spiral cut potatoes, spiral spuds, shaved ice, whatever. And they have all that at the Cave Run Storytelling Festival. Uh, but the thing that I enjoyed most was definitely the storytelling. That's, Absolutely. That's what I went for. And boy, did they deliver. So if you want to hear some narrative nonfiction, go to the Cave Run Storytelling Festival and head over to their social media and be sure to like them on facebook follow them on twitter and so forth as well not sponsored <laughs> yeah like hashtag not sponsored obviously. uh but you know like we'll if, if they have it we'll be there absolutely so ah oh, we should do a live podcast a live, we should do a live episode from at the storytelling that podcast. would be incredible if that's something that you guys would be interested in let, let us, us know. know be sure to you know like subscribe and comment <laughs> so Hashtag follow for more. Indeed. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but before that happens, come by on February the 23rd and go to Writer's Workshop. Learn a little bit about narrative nonfiction. Go ahead and get into it now. Why wait? And then you'll have that much more of an appreciation for it when the Storytelling Festival comes. Now, moving on to March, of course, all of our recurring programming is going to be in place. So starting on March 1st and every Tuesday, we're going to have toddler time. And that's going to be at 10.15 a.m. as always. And then every Monday and Thursday, we're going to have children's story time at 4 p.m. Unless, of course, you know, there is a closure or some other event that takes precedence. Like, for example, again, we will be closed for President's Day on February the 21st. That is a Monday. There's not going to be a children's story time. So there you go. That's your heads up. But there will be every Monday and Thursday in March. As far as I'm aware, right now, there is nothing that blocks out any of that. We're going to have a craft and a round from 10 to 2 on the 14th, of course. That is the second Monday. So as always, the second Monday of the month, Jess has a new, exciting, wonderful craft that you get to come and make and then keep and take home. And all materials are provided by the library. So drop in. Anyone 13 and up is welcome to come from 10 to 2. And as participation in that goes up, we know that some folks have said, hey, I can't really make it from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on a Monday. Is there any way that you could do these on like a Saturday or a Sunday or something? And uh, Jess has said yes. If we, if we get enough participation on the Monday, we get enough requests for people saying, hey, can we do a Saturday version of these? I could come on a Saturday. I can't make a Monday. Let us know. Be sure to let us know in writing whether that is a written note delivered to the front desk and addressed to Jess, or if that is a Facebook comment, tweet at us, leave us a comment on YouTube, wherever. Let us know that that's what you want, and that is the best way to tell us we need to do something different or something new. And that applies to any of our programs. So, you know, if you want an adult Lego club, let us know. 
if you want a service that we're not offering, if you want us to circulate a certain type of material that maybe we're not circulating, let us know. And if enough people ask for that, then we can justify doing that. I feel like I've had, I don't know why lately the influx has been so large of people coming in and specifically asking us how much things cost. But we've had a lot of people asking um, like what the admission price is for certain programs of ours or how much it costs to check out um, certain items like our hotspots or our telescopes or dulcimers or things like that. And all of the services that we provide you guys are always going to be free. Yes. Um, So if you're afraid to ask us for something that you are not seeing because you're afraid of what will charge you, we won't. Yes, never be (laughs) afraid of that. But don't be afraid to ask for something because you think that it's going to come at a cost. Because I've got news for you folks. This happened at the, uh, well, not the Arts and Eats Festival. We didn't really have that last year. What what did, what did we call it? I can't remember. It was something different. Something that is not an arts annual and festival. Arts and Antiques. Yes, Arts and arts Antiques. Arts and Antiques replaced Arts and Eats last year. At the Arts and Antiques Fair, uh, I got that question a lot where people said, well, how can you afford to do this? How can you afford to just give this stuff away? How can you a- afford to do all of this for free, folks? We are a community service. We're a government entity. Your tax dollars have already paid for it. That's why this stuff belongs to you. That's why this is your Rowan County Public Library. And we always want to emphasize that because we belong to you. We work for you. We provide these services for you because you that's what you paid for. You pay a library tax. This is what it buys is all of these services and programs and all of these materials that we circulate. So that's why we appreciate library advocacy so much. That's why we appreciate it when you come to these things. That is you saying that you need the library, that you love the library. When you show up and participate, that is a form of library advocacy. And of course, if you want to take it a step further, February is Love Your Library Month. Feel free to come by and write a note that we can stick in our window, a little heart-shaped note at the front desk. We have the, the, the sticky hearts tell us what you love about your library and why you love your library and you can also join the friends of the library and there's information about that on our website if you go to rowancountylibrary.org slash support you can find information about what you can do to get more involved and to do things like join the friends of the library and and be involved to volunteer and so forth And uh, February is also, uh, I almost forgot about this because we're in March. It's still Blind Date with a Book Month. Yes, Blind Date with a Book is still going on. And I I know that we did touch on this um, in, was it the podcast before, the episode before this one or the one before that? I can't remember. Maybe, I think it's probably the one one before. before. You're right. It was the one before. Um, But in case you missed that one, we still do have Blind Date with a Book going on right now. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a display that is set up on um, our little display shelf right back next to our our young adult, our teen area. Um, And you'll find a bunch of books wrapped up in paper um, with some little, um, they're not excerpts, they're, what do I want to say? Like a a blurb. Like a little blurb on the front of them that... A cryptic synopsis. A a cryptic synopsis, exactly. That's going to tell you a little bit about what the book is about without giving away to you what the book is. And you'll have to decide for yourself whether you feel like you and that book might be a good match. Um, And if you decide that you want to check it out, there will be a bookmark inside it that is going to prompt you to rate your date. And tell us how you felt about this book and if it was a good match for you. Yeah, are you swiping right or swiping left on this book and (laughs) why? And think about it kind of like that, like that that little one-sentence blurb on the front of the book. That's all you're going to know. It's like best foot forward, like you'd see on a dating app. This is the book's, like, tender tagline. (laughs) And that's all you're going to know about the book going in, and you have to risk it. So take a chance. We invite you to gamble on these books. See how things go. See if it grabs you. See if it, you know, if it sparks your interest. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Let us know. Every bookmark you return is an entry into our prize drawing. Even if you hate the book. Even if you hate the book. Yeah. Just read it and let us know why you hated it. And that's that's a, an entry into the drawing. So you have nothing to lose. So back to March. We are going to have Craft and Around on the 14th. Then on the 16th at 3.30. 
uh, we will have a board meeting. Our board of trustees will be meeting in our conference room. Those meetings are open to the public. If you want to come and find out a little bit more about library business, about how things work behind the scenes, policies that they're putting in place and why, uh, rules that they're changing or the development, you know, the direction that the library is going, things that we have planned, they're going to be talking about that. And that is always the third Wednesday of the month at 3.30 p.m. So if you can make it, those meetings are open to the public. 17th will be movie night. That is the third Thursday of every month, of course, at 5.30 p.m. we will have movie night. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what the movie is for March yet, so I would invite you to check our events calendar at rowancountylibrary.org slash events, where we have a Google calendar that has everything on it. You can add that to your calendar app of choice, especially if you use Google Calendar, and it just takes a click. That keeps you updated. You get notifications on everything that's coming up. And uh, if you follow our website, follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Goodreads, then you will be able to see what the movie is well before we get there. I will make sure to post it as soon as I know. I just don't know that Jessica has decided yet. I know that the February movie that is going to be, we are recording this on Wednesday, so uh, tomorrow for us. For us. But for you, yeah, it's over. Yeah, for, for you, by the time you hear this, it'll be over. But on the 17th, <laughs> the movie was uh, My Salinger Year, uh, because unfortunately we had to cancel the January movie night, so we bumped that up. That's our first R-rated movie. Yeah. I don't know that we've ever shown one. I, As far as I am aware, we have not ever shown one. So Yeah, so that's kind of, you know, breaking new ground for us. But we want to offer something for all demographics. And so we're always going to have family movies available. But we also want to sometimes offer something where, you know, you can leave the kids at home and you can come and you as an adult, as a grown up, can come with your friends who are also grown up adults. <laughs> uh, and you can still enjoy soft drinks on us and real actual buttered like just just, just movie theater. Popcorn. Oh, movie theater popcorn is so good. <laughs> So good. so good. So I bad. Want it right now. So good. So good. So bad for you. <laughs> uh, just covered in butter. Oh my gosh. And we make it in a popcorn machine that was kindly provided to us by the friends of the library. So you have an idea of some of the things that they do. They're the ones who cater a lot of our events and who buy us nice things so that we can do programs like that for you. Yeah. Come to movie night. Follow us on social media and check it out. Keep up with what that movie is going to be. And as soon as Jess tells me, I'll let you know. Then, of course, on the 29th of March, we will have another on board. And on the 30th, we will have another writer's workshop. So those are always the last Tuesday and last Wednesday of the month, respectively. Oh, I think I skipped over something. First Wednesday of the month, I should say. That's a teen anime club. Yes. Um, ooh, I can't believe I skipped over. I had my list in order and everything. Megan and would slap your wrists. Honestly. Well, and she should. I'll have to go find her after we're done here. <laughs> so teen anime club for March is going to be Demon Slayer. And you're going, the craft for Teen Anime Club next month is going to be making swords like those in the anime. Of course, I'm sure it's going to be like paper craft or cardboard. I'm honestly still so jealous though. Yeah. I want to make a sword. For real. And Demon Slayer is such a good anime. I have a friend who, so <laughs> I'm picky about my anime. When I was younger, and the anime phenomenon was kind of new to America, where it was slowly moving out of the realm of this is something that you see very late at night or very early in the morning on Saturdays and Fridays uh, on like the sci-fi channel. And it was always art house stuff like Robot Carnival. Now we have all the anime uh, yeah. You know, like it gets translated immediately and there's anime that they make most like kind of for American I actually audiences. think that it's hilarious. Um, I have definitely seen some reactions just like online to the way that Americans consume anime mm -hmm. from Asian people and Asian audiences. And they really just think that it's hilarious how enamored we still are with the concept of yeah anime. like we're so into it and they're like i mean that's we, awesome but you, we've been doing this y'all wild <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> welcome to the train i guess welcome welcome on the bandwagon uh but yeah I, I remember when it was kind of a weird art house thing yeah you know it was a it was a foreign film and it was treated like that so when you first saw some of the original ghibli films like um Kiki's Delivery Service or something Hell's like that. Hell's Moving Castle. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, and you know, Princess Mononoke, right. things like that that we take for granted now that are classics. Well, at the time, they were breaking new ground because it was kind of odd that they were being translated into English in the first place, and they were treated like art pieces as opposed to now you just catch it on TV. And that didn't happen before Cartoon Network came out with Toonami, and they brought us like Dragon Ball and they brought us Roroni Kenshin and Tenshi Muyo and things like that. And, and that was all new at the time. And it was certainly new to me. I knew what anime was, but it was not something that you could just sit down and watch after school on a weekday until Toonami. And so nowadays, like I've, I've moved from watching all of the anime I can get because it's like rare and special to I, I have genres of choice. Uh, you know, my tastes have matured and I'm like, eh, I'm not super into shonen anime, a lot of like Bleach, Naruto, One Piece, that kind of stuff. It's all kind of samey and and so, you know, but there's there has to be enough anime for that to have become true. And right. it's been cool to be there for that evolution. So now I'm into some different stuff, but Demon Slayer is absolutely a shonen anime, but I'm so into it. Um, <laughs> I have I have a friend who really wanted me to watch it. Like, he was on my back, like, you've got to watch Demon Slayer. You've got to watch Demon Slayer. It's so good. It's so pretty. You have to watch it. It's so good. And I was like, dude, bro, I'll, I'll get to it. I'll get to it when I get to it. Okay? Oh, no. Like, listen. Uh, <laughs> listen, I'll... I'll I'll get, I'll let you know. We'll watch it together. That always makes me defiant. Like if people are that serious about me watching something, consuming any type of media, honestly, reading something, watching a video, even like whatever it is, if you keep pushing it on me, the longer that you insist that I do the thing, the longer it's going to take me to do the thing. Like I am somewhat ashamed to admit that (laughs) I, I dug in my heels and it took me a while to get on the Demon Slayer bandwagon because he was like, oh my God, it's so good. You have to watch it. You have to do it now. And it was like, well... Like now I'm going to put it off. Then for, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to put it off for another week. Yeah. Every yep. time you ask me, every time you tell me how good it is and say, have you watched it yet? I'm going to put it off for another I'm going to say, no, no, what's that? And Sorry. I, I promise <laughs> as someone who finally broke down and watched it, you are only hurting yourself. You are only depriving yourself. You should absolutely go watch Demon Slayer. It's very good. If you like action anime, if you like shonen anime, uh, it's, it's great. And it's going to be a good time. So if you don't watch Demon Slayer, then if you are 13 to 17 and you want to come to Teen Anime Club, you should. It's always a good time. Megan's very cool to hang out with. There's snacks, there's crafts, there's games that are all themed around whatever manga or anime is the current topic, is the featured series. Last month, or well, this month, it was Sailor Moon. And in January, uh, it was My Hero Academia. So she picks good stuff, not just classics, but also things that are currently mainstream. So Demon Slayer is one of those. Uh, It's going to be great. Come experience it for the first time and get into it. If you're curious about it, if you don't know what it is, if you're already a fan, then you're guaranteed to have fun because, of course, people are going to be getting excited and you'll get to be there as they're introduced to it for the first time. Bring your friends. It's just have a good time. Let people know. Teen Anime Club. First Wednesday of every month, 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. here at your Rowan County Public Library. So I think... That bout does it for February and March. Is there anything that we have forgotten? Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, wait. There is one thing we've forgotten. And I forgot because it's brand new. We just decided on it. So I didn't have it on my list. Ah, ah, okay. So it's a good thing that we're talking about Teen Anime Club because it is usually on the first Wednesday. In March, it got bumped up a week. It's not on the 2nd. This is very important. Stay with me. It's not on the 2nd. It's on the 9th. That is off schedule for Teen Anime Club. And it will be back in April to the first Wednesday. That got bumped up because, very important date, March the 2nd is Dr. Seuss's birthday. (gasps) That's right. How could we forget about Dr. Seuss night? So Dr. Seuss day is Wednesday, March the 2nd. Anime Club, Teen Anime Club and Demon Slayer will be on the 9th. So I have to move that on the calendar. (gasps) We we just decided about that like like last night. So so Dr. Seuss day, we are very glad to be bringing this back uh, because last year I don't think we got to do it. We didn't. I don't think the year before last either, no. Yeah. So we always celebrate Dr. Seuss's birthday. And kids 
are allowed to come. There's going to be like a story time. There's going to be some Dr. Seuss readings. There's going to be themed games and activities. There's going to be a craft that Miss Sandy put together. Uh, she is so excited to be able to do this. She's very excited because we haven't gotten to do it for like two years. So this year, Dr. Seuss Day is coming back. So come back. I don't know which book she's reading. It may be, or it may be several because of course, Dr. Seuss's books are fairly of short. Of course. Um, but this is going to be great if you've got small kids, if you have little brothers and sisters, or if you're just a fan. I mean, because I have to say, Dr. Seuss is very special to me because The Cat in the Hat is the first book I ever read by myself. Oh, really? You know, back when I was a tiny, tiny baby and I was learning to read and I was like three or four, The Cat in the Hat was the first book uh, that I ever read on my own. And I will never forget. My mother insists it was because she had read it to me so many times that I just had it memorized. So I wasn't actually reading it. I was just reciting it. Uh, but I know. I was there. I know. You I, remember. I read it. And if I didn't read it then, I've read it now. So <laughs> <laughs> so there, Mom. <laughs> but it's true. I spent many an hour of my life on one parent's knee or the other having the cat in the hat read to me until I'm sure they were so sick of dr seuss uh green eggs and ham oh the places you'll go one fish two fish red fish blue fish all the classics that you know and love and if you if you don't know and love dr seuss you come to dr seuss day so that you can get to know and love dr seuss because it is transformative uh early childhood literacy is so critical so important that's one of the services that we try our best to get behind and push and uh and support the most and dr seuss is a huge part of that because things like fox and socks they're so easy to read but they are so developmentally like they're just really good reading they teach you a lot about homophones and about you know adjectives and adverbs and and just and because they rhyme for the most part kids get into them because if it rhymes it sticks in your head you learn faster you learn better if it is a song or if it makes you laugh and dr seuss does both so come to dr seuss day and support that that will be uh from 4 to 6 p.m dr seuss i said dr seuss day all day is dr seuss day but Dr. Seuss Night is the program. Is the program. That's what we'll be doing. So from 4 to 6 p.m. Wednesday, March the 2nd, Dr. Seuss Night. Come be a part of that. And it, of course, it is free. Again, it is free. Check on the website. We've got those times there. Uh, we have a Facebook event set up. That's already out by the time that this is, uh, by the time that this goes up and you're listening to it. Uh, and we'll we'll see you there. And I think that actually is everything. Okay. For February and yeah, March. I think I we're can't covered think of now. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at my list. I think that that's everything. So uh, we will be back March the 5th. March the 5th. March the 5th. Because that's the first Saturday. My calendar's wonky. March the 5th. And then we will be back um, March the 19th. And we will tell you all about the programming that's going to be happening in April. Thank you for listening. If you made it to the end, we appreciate it, of course. Be sure to follow us on social media. And that is all linked down below. If you're listening, of course, we upload this to YouTube. All of our social media links are in the video description. Just scroll down. We'll catch you on our website, rowancountylibrary.org. I'm Morgan. I'm Emery. Thank you for listening to The Reading Room, the podcast brought to you by your Rowan County Public Library. <laughs>